Hey, what's up guys? It's Kyle and I've got Chris here. Chris is with JCB and Chris, you this is your project? This is, the skid is mine. I am the uh, product manager for skid steers and compact track loaders. Now, if you guys have been following me for any sort of time, you know that I love my Kubota skid loader. I saw it. And so <laughs> JCB reached out to me and they said, hey, we think that you would love the teleskid. I think it would be super efficient and it would make your job on site a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're here to show me, yep. all the features about the teleskid. And then you guys are gonna stay tuned to the channel and watch because I'm going to be building this project behind us. And then I'm gonna try to accumulate all the pros and cons and what I think about this is specifically for us as post frame builders, mm -hmm. but then also to try to help you guys if you're interested, if this is on your radar for maybe a potential piece of equipment, my kind of pros and cons, what I think, and you know how it really relates to what we do specifically. So Chris, why don't you take us through the features? Cause I know the, the things people are already saying in the video what they think about this. Yep, okay, so this is our track version of the JCB Teleskid. It weighs 12,615 pounds. Uh, it has an ROC while it sits right here of 3,695 pounds. Uh, extended, it's right around 1,600 pounds or 2306 at So 50%. ROC stands so for? the rated operating capacity. Okay, just making sure everybody um, knows that. That's at 35% for tracks and it's 50 for wheels. Okay. All right, um, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is, is the offset of the cab. So if you look at the front of the machine, you'll notice that the cab is offset from the chassis. Um, and then everything underneath it is streamlined down the center. Uh, so what this does is the gear pump, the transmission, the engine is all streamlined to one side uh, to give you a 50-50 weight distribution on the arm. You'll see that there's a guide cup uh, hidden behind the uh, boom here. And what this does is if you were to hit anything with your bucket while you're moving material, um, the force of it would actually travel the length uh, of the chassis. So yeah. you're saying this guy right yeah. back here, yeah. this cup right here. Okay. Um, and then it has an H-frame design underneath the cab and that helps, that keeps it rigid. Um, so the force travels the length of the chassis and not up the arm. So what you're saying is basically, cause I know this is what you guys are thinking, this thing with an offset arm, yep. this is gonna twist with repetitive force, but what this is doing is, it, is, is, helping. is helping that. And then we'll get to the arm twisting here in a second. Okay, we'll and the, the offset cab, that's yep. gonna help with Tip. Weight distribution, so if you're on a, a slope or something like that, uh, one of the questions I get asked is, will the machine roll because of the weight of the, of the boom? Um, what this does is it helps with the weight, it distributes it evenly throughout the machine, um, so you don't have to worry about that. We move down to the quick hitch. Uh, the quick hitch is fully enclosed, uh, our original model. Um, we just had a cover on it. This one is fully enclosed, everything's on the inside. You do have access plates on the top, uh, backside and the side of the uh, quick hitch to get to it if you need to do any service for it. Uh, if you look right here, you see a red indicator and what this does, it lets you know if the attachment is in the locked or unlocked position. So what is this gonna do? Down is in the locked position. It'll come up. And there's a button inside the cab, you push it, um, it'll come up and it'll let you know that the attachment is unlocked. Okay. Um, better visibility straight to it. You only have to look at one indicator. Unique to JCB are our wear plates that are located right here on your quick attachment. Um, what this does is it doesn't sit directly on it. It sits on these pads. And what it does is over time, hooking up different attachments, you'll start to damage your quick attachment. But what we did is we had wear pads. So you can get four uses. They start to wear down. You unbolt them, rotate them around. Once those start to wear out, you can flip them over and use it again. So you get four uses of it before you actually How many have times to before you're flipping and rotating? Um, the... it, it depends on how many times you're taking attachments on and off. Have you guys done um, any testing on how many times we that haven't, is? We haven't replaced them yet on any of our machines. And this comes standard on uh, all our models other than the 215. So. What year did you start putting that on? Uh, right around 2016. Okay, so it's been a couple years yeah. anyway and nobody's had any issues? No issues. Okay. All right, so we'll move over to the tilt cylinder here. Okay. Um, so our original design, it used to sit right here. So you had to actually lift the boom up and place your safety strut in it uh, before you could tilt the cab in the forward position for serviceability. Um, because we moved it over and put a, a cover on it, uh, it no longer interferes with the cab. Um, so you can actually tilt it forward uh, while the arm is in the down position, which obviously is safer. Um, so what we'll do is we'll move over to the other side of the machine. Okay. You'll see auxiliary couplers. These are standard and these ones are your high flow. 
So what that means for the operator is when the boom extends out, which gives you eight feet of forward reach, um, you can only use standard flow uh, attachments. If you're using a high flow mower or anything like that, you're going to use them up here, but you can't extend the arm out. And we did that safety? for safety reasons. Okay. Um, What's the flow on these, Chris? So you have your standard and uh, high flow. So the high flow, the max high flow for this is 33 gallons per minute. Okay. Um, you do have a re pressure relief valve right here, and all you do is pull on it uh, in case you know pressure is built up in your um, auxiliary lines and a 14 pin connector for multi-function attachments. At JCB recently, we no longer uh, offer any radial um, machines now. Uh, we're all vertical, minus the teleskid. And the reason is, if you look at our brochure, it says it's radial and vertical. And the reason it's radi radial and vertical lift is because the arm extends out and gives you that vertical reach. Radial lift, your uh, furthest reach on radial, um, so it kind of rotates out like this. Yep. So your furthest forward reach is going to be somewhere right, right at chest level for, for the operator in the cab. Um, and then vertical, the furthest reach is at the bottom and at the top. It's the same distance um, forward. Um, because the arm extends, it gives you both of that. So okay. you get both, both of them. Good for loading trucks. Loading trucks. Digging um, holes, anything, because yep. you can keep it, everything yep. in a Loading line. hay in a barn, everything. One of the design changes that we have on here is our double taper pin. So this boss right here is 40 millimeters larger than our original design, and it has a double taper pin. And what it is, is the pin comes together and the bolt goes through. So if the arm tries to shift, it actually will rotate the pin inside there. And that's what keeps it when people ask about, is the arm gonna sway or is it gonna twist? And then the great thing about the arm is it has 20% more steel than a two arm skid steer does. And- Like when you combine two yep, arms, yes, The amount 20. of steel yep, is 20% more in this. And the greatest thing about it is it has a lifetime warranty on it. I mean, did you guys do that purposely because you knew that that was going to be the biggest caveat for people? Like, hey, it's going to twist. Well, oh yeah, we'll give you a lifetime warranty. Yeah, we we know we know the boom's not going to go anywhere. Okay. Um, what is the fail point then? Because uh, everything like, where is the weakest point on this? If there was a weak point on it, I would say it's on the back of the tower. Okay. And and, and somebody has asked me it before, and obviously you can take anything that you think is indestructible you and destroy. You can break it. Yeah. yeah. It's only um, rated for X, yep. and you guys are yeah. more than capable of doing that. Correct. Okay. As you can see, we have a 74 horsepower JCB Ecomax engine. Um, so it requires no after treatment, no DPF, no DEF. So pretty much machine, check your fluids, put your diesel in, and you're ready to go do whatever you need to now, do. Now, is that the because day. the tier four final is like a 75 and under? Yep. And so, that's exactly what that okay, is. Okay, all right. Um, so we stay just below it. So as you can see, all your filters are easily accessible. They're all located to the rear of the machine. Uh, you have your dipstick right here, sight gauge for your hydraulic oil. Uh, you have an isolator key, and this will kill the power to the machine. So if you're operating or trying to service the machine and you're in the engine, you don't want someone starting it up. This machine does come standard with a reversing fan that goes off every 15 minutes. Okay. So. You're in a high dust area every 15 minutes, it'll um, reverse the fan and blow all the debris out. Now, if you're in a really high dust area, you can look, uh, do everything in the cab as well, manually. So oh, you've if got you a need button it, to reverse yeah, it? Yeah, so if you need it more than 15 minutes, you can just push a button. And you're gonna know that because your temp's going up and... You're yeah, like, oh, it depends better. on where you're working at, you know? Okay. Uh, one guy that uses it a lot is uh, in a peanut farm. He's got a bunch of dust and everything and he loves um, doing it manually mm, inside. It is yeah. interesting. Yeah. So at our factory in Savannah, Georgia, we got a saying that's on our viewing deck um, and we call it world's safest skid steer. And the reason why we call it that is because of our side door entry. So as you reach over and open up the door, you can see how much room you have to get inside. Um, a lot of operators that have bought this unit love it because if they're doing pallet work or anything like that, they can hop outside of the machine. Um, there's no risk of climbing in and out of the front like competitors. Uh, you're not climbing um, over slippery attachments or unsupported boom. Or underneath. Uh, yeah. Something um, in the air. And you don't have to have it at a certain level to get out of the machine. Yeah. Um, so we've never done that, have we, Greg? Nope. Yeah. Safety first. You have a seatbelt on your right hip. Do you have to wear a seatbelt? No. I'm just asking. If, uh, I would always wear a seatbelt. <laughs> we always believe in safety. Now, somebody did ask a question a couple days ago and said, will a machine operate if the seatbelt is not 
if that's the question you're asking. So, I already know that answer because so, I've already moved this. So thing. no, no, the machine will. We've yeah, got yes, it will on. operate without it. Yeah. Now the two safeties for it is the left hand pod and the right uh, lap bar do have to be down at any point during operation. It let's say you know you have some bumpy ground going on, either one of these jumps up a little bit, it's automatically going to put your machine in park. But these tracks are these tracks uh, as a standard. They are standard. For, what is what is JCB. it going to be? Is it just so, across the board? They're, yeah, across the board. This is the only track that that we offer, um, and it's because it's. It's like I tell people, they're good for snow and they're good for mud, but they're not great. Okay. So yeah, it's gonna do a little bit of everything. Yeah, Jack obviously you can put you know the sea lug pattern on it if you want to you know go through mud or something like that. All you gotta do is just grab the top hinge, push up. Sweet, very accessible. You got your gear pump transmission, your LVB. Uh, if you need to get to parts of the front of the engine you can tan as well. Yeah, I won't be getting back here for nothing. <laughs> I built barns, I don't work yeah. <laughs> What about things like fuel economy? I mean, like, I know it depends on how much, how, how big is a fuel tank in this? Uh, it's about 24 gallons. 24 gallons? Okay. At a 74 horse, it's not gonna be, you know, drinking it too hard. No, I mean, that's, no. Hmm. One thing I'd like to talk about on the boom um, is, we kind of stole the design from the telehandler, which is where we got our name Teleskid from. The boom, when it extends out, the steel on the top is actually rolled and it's not welded. It's welded only on the bottom. So instead of having a four box weld, you have only two welds, which also increases the strength of the boom as well. Hmm. Yeah, so I mean, whenever anybody says, how can that one arm be strong yep. enough? You'd have to be like, well, telehandlers. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Yep, so. exactly. Interesting. Very, very cool. Well, we're definitely, uh, definitely very excited to put this to work. And just if nothing else, man, I, you know, it's super cool. It's a great idea. The the mono, you know, out of the way. This mm -hmm. one arm, the side entrance, and I guess, yeah, I really appreciate you coming out, Chris, yeah. and kind of taking us through this. And I can't wait to put it to work and see how it really performs. Yeah. So, one question for you. Yeah. When this is out all the way. Did you tell me what the capacity yep, was? Yep, so all the way out uh, gives you eight feet of forward reach, uh, hinge pin height of 13 feet, three inches. Mm -hmm. uh, while it's retracted. What's uh, the capacity the, though of the The lift lifting? capacity retracted okay. is 3,695 pounds. Yep. Um, and fully extended out, it's 1,600 pounds. Okay. And that's at 35% of the tip. And what if I put my boom that I have at the end of that thing that goes out another 20 foot? Then you're gonna have to do the math on what it would be able to lift. I don't do math. We'll probably just stick something <laughs> just on Just try it anyways. And, and see where, yeah, yeah, it goes. But that would be pretty cool. Awesome. All right, man. All right. Thank you so yep, much. Not Can't a problem. Wait to put it to put it to work, and uh, and I'll let you guys know what I think about it.